you know, I, I had thought that Monk's antics were always really amusing. But in this one episode, suddenly I realized, dude, this guy is mentally ill. This is not funny anymore because it was so important for him to be reinstated as a policeman. And he couldn't even fill out the form. He was so anal about filling in the circles and all that stuff that his entire hour passed by. And dude, that was not funny because I understood this is his whole life and, and it's his one chance to get it back. And he can't even fill out the form, let alone to get the questions that he knows the answers to done and so, yeah, it's just, I, I, I wonder if anybody else has ever felt like that. That it's like, oh, shoot, I can't watch Monk anymore. It, it, it went too far. Mm -hmm. So you don't watch Monk anymore, huh? No, I, I stopped for like two days and then started watching it again. Uh, That's got to be a real fine line to walk of, okay, how crazy can we make this guy before we totally alienate right. people or before it stops being funny? Yeah. Because that's what it was. Uh, do you know the premise of this show? Oh, yeah. I've seen it a lot of times. His wife was murdered. depressing instead and of funny. So they try and balance the pathos of this is a man who had a loving wife and now she's dead with this is the wackiest guy you've ever seen. And oh, he's a germphobic and he's agoraphobic Sadie. and he's, you know, all the homophobic and all these things. <laughs> yeah. Wait, are we recording? Yeah, we have been for a while. Oh, OK. Well, Welcome. To that gets my goat. This is Rish Outfield, and this is Big Anklevich. I guess I've talked enough already. Um, All right. Do you have anything that uh, that is getting your goat today, this week? This week, let's see. You know what kind of gets my goat? Probably on occasions. Yeah, you've, you've probably Kesha heard me complain with the dollar sign. Uh, have we complained about the unbelievable proliferation of people that? What are they called? Are they called homonyms? Homeless? Are they called homonyms or are they called something? There's something anims or is it homophones? Homilies? Those words that are spelt different but they sound the same. Like they are there, there, and there. There's three theirs, right? Okay. And those are called homopho homophones? Sorry, homophones ladies. Homophones or homonids? Hominids? Really? Homo, homo. Isn't hominids like a subspecies of human being? <laughs> or like Neanderthal, Homo erectus? Crap, now I can't even remember. Homonyms, I think it might be. Okay. They sound alike. Like synonyms mean the same thing, but they don't sound alike. Homonyms sound the same, but they don't mean the same. I think. I could be totally wrong. Maybe we ought to bust out dictionary.com, but we're not going to. We're just going to plow ahead. That's right. This is not our <clears throat> real podcast. This is just for the people who love us and you, sir. Wow. <laughs> Doesn't it creep you out that that guy just watches us? Yeah, and he has that sign that he holds up every time in protest. And See, I, I'm too proud to wear glasses, so it's just a blur to oh, me. Oh, that's probably good because your name is the first two words on the sign. So anyways, yes, these words, there's some that I'm just completely, completely flummoxed by. Is that one of them? No, because there's not anything that sounds or is spelled like flummox, except for your big lummox. Sometimes people say that. That's a good one. Anyways. Stomachs. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Then and than. Okay, so those are not homonyms. They're not homonyms, but they're similar. And yet, people get these, you know, they get them confused. I don't see how they get them confused all the time. But the worst part about it is, I see them screwed up so much, I'm starting to have trouble telling them apart and which one should be where. Wow, okay. It freaks me out when sometimes I'm like, then, and I'm like, oh, crap, that should be a then there. What is going on? Because you have become I what have you become most what despise. I most despise. It's not good. You know, and there's the other ones. Uh, this one I never mess up, but lose. Nobody knows how to spell lose anymore. L-O-U. Apparently, yes. yeah, you have to, to, to get that ooh sound, you have to have two O's. So everyone spells lose loose. But loose is a word. Loose is a word, and that's why... Oh, that's why it always it, is mistaken, because spell gets check through. doesn't... Yeah, spell checks isn't going to highlight that. It's one of those. But yeah, then and then really bugs me, because so many people, you know, you get on those internet message board sites, and they're comparing this to that. This is better than that. Which drives me just friggin' crazy. Well, see, I hate all of the internet speak, and the text speak, and, and the lax 
standards of spelling or punctuation and all that stuff. People say, well, you know, what does it matter? It's just a text or it's just an email. Mm -hmm. But it's exactly what you said. You type something wrong enough times and the synapses in your brain start to tell you that that is correct, that that is okay. Yeah. And the one that I hear all the time is should of uh -huh. instead of should have or should of. And on paper, that is so glaringly wrong. Should O-V. I mean, sorry. Should <laughs> O-F. But because people say should have and it sounds exactly the same, I guess yes, people, people write it. People just but, don't realize that that's not what it is. I mean, there are some like sit and set where I consciously have to say, okay, to, you set something down, you sit down. Or lie and lay. Those to me are genuinely difficult to keep uh -huh. track of. But things like should have and should have and there, short for they are, and there as in possessive, their home, their uterus. Well, those shouldn't be hard, but I still uh, on occasion will mess up a there. And I, usually I'll catch it, but sometimes I don't. And I just feel so embarrassed when I, when I get one of those wrong. That just, that just sucks. That's just not right. So sometimes that gets my goat. It's funny because I am sitting here as the editor of a magazine complaining about people's grammar, but I'm not complaining about people that send us stories in this particular case. It has nothing to do with people that write. Because the people that write and send us stuff are like, they're usually 90% or even 95% better. You know, they're in the 95th percentile for their uh, grammar well, they're, they're and their writers. spelling. They're passionate they're about yeah, writing. They're, they're people that are actually trying and they care. But yeah, it's the other folks that you just get on sites that are discussing movies or that are discussing sports or that are discussing whatever else it is. And God, it's amazing just how bad these people that aren't writers can be. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that just writers, aside from writing all the time, they also read all the time. And the more you read, the less likely you're going to be to take that same, you know, those words that you've seen a bunch of times and then use them completely incorrect. So there's that. I don't even get me started on message boards. Just the, <laughs> I think I ranted about this on the very first episode of just the freedom that the internet has given people to say whatever they want. Uh -huh. But there's no punishment if you say something stupid or if you have half of your letters all caps in your conversation and i think on one message board i saw you can just click ignore on the user and you never have <laughs> yep. to see their posts again and so somebody somewhere is learning and becoming more savvy and saying hey this is an important tool because there are some morons out there <laughs> like for example today there was a news site and it had a couple pictures released from next year's Captain America movie. And everybody was celebrating VE Day, which is the when we defeated the Germans. When we, sorry. When the Allies defeated the Germans and a, a bunch of people are, are waving newspapers that say, you know, victory in Germany. And they're also waving flags. And they were the British flag. Because I suppose the scene is showing what's happening in London. I, I don't know the context, but everybody is in period clothes. There are some soldiers, you know, in, in clothes and, and in clothes, obviously. That's good. In uniform. And uh, the only reason I knew why they were celebrating is because somebody was holding up a, a paper saying, you know, that victory in, in Europe, which is VE Day. And some moron in the comments said, I'm so sick of this American-centric patriotism. Those, pi those pictures make me want to puke. And okay, I was worried that that would happen when someone dared to make a movie called Captain America, but the flags in the photos were all British flags, okay? Ah, and you don't see Captain America <laughs> in the photos. It's just, so that gets my goat. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I understand that whoever's on top gets all the rocks thrown at them and stuff. And, and I understand that America is not as popular as it once was because of some mistakes that have been made or some, some questionable choices that have been made. But if any time there was black and white, good and evil, it's that time in the, in the 1940s when World War II happened. And it's just amazing how much the world has changed. But I, we've talked about, you know, you, who you can't 
vilify in movies and who you can, you can always, always point at Nazis and say bad guys. You can always vilify Nazis. PCism has to encompass the entire six billion people on Earth before suddenly it's no longer okay to say Nazis are bad. Yeah. Anyhow, I, I hope, one, that Captain America is a really good movie when it comes out. That above all, because that hopefully will shut people up. But two, I hope people also watch it in the spirit of the time that it set and just the mindset of when it was okay to be patriotic, when it was the expected thing, when it was a thing that you were super passionate about because millions of people were dying because they believed in something. I, I just, I hope that when you watch that movie, you forget about who is president and, and who belongs to what party and, and all of that stuff. Because what a good movie does is it sweeps you away and takes you away from your problems and, and, and just lets you be free to explore a new story or a new world or help me out here. I, I feel like I'm floundering. And <laughs> if you've got to say some more words, I don't know. Surely you've encountered that because you're a big fan of soccer. Uh -huh. And soccer is a minor sport in America, it, right. regardless of the lies they will tell you. <laughs> Nobody plays soccer in America. Nobody is a fan of soccer in America. The people that are fans are from other countries. They are immigrants. They have brought oh, okay. their love for football to America and taught it to their children or, or you know, they, you know, they brought it because it's such a gigantic sport everywhere else. I mean, it is the backbone of a lot of nations national pride. Uh -huh. So surely you have felt that the brunt of the anti-American sentiment, like when uh, the U.S. goes to the World Cup and people don't feel that they deserve to go, uh, but it's all politics. Or, uh, am I just talking? I mean, I watched some of the World Cup this year. Well, uh, you, you, it's not all politics. Uh, no, no, I'm saying that this is what World people Cup are saying. Goes, you have to qualify, so you, you have to win the games to get there. But yeah, there there is a lot of that, I think. For What you're, what, what were you trying to say with that exactly? I'm... You are heavily involved in soccer, in the message boards, and, and uh -huh. being a fan, and... Because it's not a priority for Americans, I figured a lot of soccer fans resent this country, resent American fans, resent America in general. Because you know, it's like oh, we don't, we won't even let you call it football because we have our <laughs> own. Uh, you know, I don't know. Mostly, the people that I'm with are also American and American fans, so I don't get so much of the resent. It's much more. What you get is the people here who have the inferiority complex. You would think that Americans always think they're better than everyone else. But in, as, as far as soccer goes, but, rightly so. Yeah, we, we have this inferiority complex because, you know, we've never had a sustained league that stuck around long enough. You know, the, the uh, we had a league once and then it fell apart because they didn't make wise decisions with it. and. Now we're trying again, and we're trying this time to do it slowly. And because we're doing it slowly, nobody takes it seriously. Oh, it's just this podunk piece of crap league, and I'm only going to watch English Premier League football, or I'll only watch Spanish League football, or whatever. Americans say that. They resent and poo-poo their own national uh, league, which I think is sad if they would only learn that, you know, if they were to invest the money that they invested in some other country's league into their own league, then could probably become just as good. I don't know. Uh, it's different. It's not so much the anti-American feelings that you get in other realms of thought, of, uh, of theaters, of the mind. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. No, I'm, I'm getting I'm completely sorry, it's very lost. Late. <laughs> well, but you're, you often complain about something that you read on the message boards or, oh, it's like I saw this and I just, oh, I wanted to punch someone. Uh-huh. So I, I was hoping to feed into that, <laughs> to just feed your rage. Your hate has made you powerful. With all of your hatred and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. Yes, my hate does make me strong, and that's good. No, no, no. It's so nothing you want to vent about the message boards. I think I did my venting with the then and then stuff, really. Okay, well, that's fine. Maybe this one should be a short one. Thank you for listening. Big Anklevich. Rich Outfields. Goodbye. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Sad but true.